In this video, I'm going to talk about the clocked D-latch. That is, a D-latch controlled by a clock signal. We'll see how an edge detection device can be used to convert a clock signal into a series of very short pulses, thereby giving closer control over the behaviour of a latch. Previously, we looked at the gated D-latch, otherwise known as the data latch, or simply the D-latch. A D-latch is a one-bit memory device. It can capture and store one bit of data, that is, a one or a zero. Let's quickly review the operation of a D-latch on a timing diagram before we see how it can be enhanced. We previously saw that while E is high, that is, while a latch is enabled, the output at Q follows the input at D. When E becomes low, Q will retain its current value, no matter what changes are happening at D. That's fine for some applications, but to build a buffer that can hold on to a multi-bit binary number, we need several D latches working in tandem. When it comes to changing the data in such a circuit, we need to be able to synchronise the setting of these latches with each other, and of course with other circuits inside the computer. This can be done by connecting the E inputs of several D latches to the same signal. And this signal can be provided by a clock. In computer science, a clock is a device that regulates all kinds of operations. It does so by generating an electrical signal that alternates between high and low at regular intervals. There are several clocks inside a typical computer, running at different frequencies. Let's take a look at the operation of a clock-controlled D-latch on a timing diagram. We're starting with D and Q both at zero, and E is at zero, so the D-latch isn't enabled. E is connected to a clock, so this input is alternating between high and low. You can see here the typical square wave of a clock being applied at input E. We'll examine the effect of this particular sequence of changes in input D. Whenever E is high, Q is the same as D. Remember, Q follows D. Q doesn't change while E is low. So this is the sequence of outputs that we can expect at Q. This is still not a perfect solution for synchronising some components. Depending on the frequency of the clock, the enabling input might be high for as much as 50 microseconds at a time. That's a long time for the data latch to be open to changes in D. For some applications, particularly those in which the outputs are fed back to the inputs, we can avoid disorder by drastically limiting the amount of time during each clock cycle that the latch can change state. Simply increasing the frequency of the clock isn't necessarily a practical solution given that a computer contains a mixture of fast and slow components. So, rather than having a D-latch that's enabled for the entire duration of half a clock cycle at a time, we can modify the circuit so that it's only enabled while the clock input is changing from low to high, a change which takes in the order of only a few nanoseconds. This brief period is known as the rising edge, or the positive edge, of the clock cycle. We want to build a D-latch that will only respond to changes in D at the rising edge, subsequent changes in D being ignored until the next rising edge. So how can we add an edge detection device to a D-latch? Consider this combination of logic gates for a moment, a NOT gate with an AND gate. One input of the AND gate is always the inverse of the other. This is how you might expect it to behave. When we input a 1 into the circuit, the inputs of the AND gate are 1 and 0, so the output is 0. When we input a 0 into the circuit, the inputs of the AND gate are 0 and 1, so the output is 0. Let's call the input C. The laws of Boolean algebra and the rules of combinational logic tell us that C and not C is zero. The fact is, however, that the NOT gate doesn't invert its input instantly. 
When the input transitions from low to high, there's a very, very brief period when the output from the NOT gate is the same as its input. This means that for the same very brief period, both inputs of the AND gate are high, and therefore, so is its output. When the NOT gate catches up, everything is once again as we'd expect. Similarly, when the input transitions from high to low, there's another very brief period in which the NOT gate must catch up. But notice that this doesn't affect the output of the AND gate. What we have here then is a device that can detect the very brief instant at which an input rises from low to high. Let's examine the operation of this edge detecting circuit on a timing diagram. The top chart shows a clock signal being applied to the input. The lower chart shows the corresponding output. The output of this circuit is low most of the time. But you can see that when the input changes from low to high, there's a very brief moment in which the output of the NOT gate lags behind its input. So momentarily, the output of this circuit is also high. We've isolated just the rising edge of the clock cycle. What we have here then is a positive edge detection device. Here's our D latch again. When we install our edge detection device at E, we can rename the enabling input to C, C for clock. Our D latch has been changed from a level triggered device into an edge triggered device. Some people would now call this a flip flop, and by many definitions they'd be correct. A flip flop being a clock edge triggered by stable, which can be in one state or another. Purists, however, would argue that this is actually a pulse latch. But it does now behave something like a flip-flop, albeit with some limitations. I'll talk about true flip-flops in a later video. The clocked D-latch has its own symbol. Notice the addition of a triangle next to input C, indicating the dynamic nature of the clock input. So let's analyse its behaviour on a timing diagram. D is sampled whenever there's a rising edge in the clock cycle. For the rest of the time, the device is latched. Q can't change. So this is what we would expect from an edge-triggered D latch, somewhat different from its level-triggered counterpart. We can alter the behaviour of our clocked D-latch with some further modifications. One of the problems with using this particular edge detection device is the pulse that it produces may not be wide enough to open the latch and let data in. This depends on all kinds of factors, including the operating characteristics of the electronic components and the specific voltage levels being applied. We can increase the delay of our edge detector, and therefore the pulse width, by adding some more NOT gates. Of course, we need to make sure there's an odd number of NOT gates to invert the signal. If needs be, we could build a falling edge detector and therefore a negative edge triggered pulse latch by immediately inverting the input signal of our original device. Alternatively, we could use a NOR gate in place of the AND gate when both inputs to the NOR gate are momentarily low at the negative edge of the clock cycle, we'll get a high output. A negative edge triggered device has a slightly different symbol. Notice the addition of a small circle at the clock input, which typically represents inversion. Another enhancement we can make is to add an extra pair of inputs called preset and clear. The only thing that's changed here is we're using three input NAND gates now. And, as with any NAND gate, only when all of the inputs are high is the output low. So when preset and clear are both kept high, they make no difference to the latching behaviour. When it's enabled at the rising edge of the clock, if D falls to zero, then so does Q. At the rising edge, if D becomes one, then so does Q. But during most of the clock cycle, while this circuit is latched, if clear is made low, 
then Q will fall to zero no matter what the current state of the flip-flop and no matter what the input at D. And in a similar fashion, if preset is made low, Q will become one unconditionally. Preset and clear are known as asynchronous inputs. They bypass the gating system of the latch, so they don't depend on the clock. These active low inputs are particularly useful when you want to initialize a group of latches, either with zeros or ones. We can now update the symbol we're using for our clocked D latch to include preset and clear. To summarize then, a clocked D latch is a one bit memory device which, as its name suggests, is enabled or disabled by the clock. It has a range of uses, for example in memory circuits, counters and shift registers. A shift register can be used to convert parallel data into serial data and vice versa, or to perform binary multiplication. More on these later. A clocked D latch can be edge triggered, making it easy to synchronize its operation with other components. This particular variation of a clocked D latch is referred to as a pulse latch and sometimes, although debatably, as a flip flop. If it's positive edge triggered, it means it's enabled when the clock signal is rising from low to high. If it's negative edge triggered, it's enabled while the clock signal is falling from high to low. A clocked D latch can also have asynchronous preset and clear inputs which are used to initialize it unconditionally.